The other day, my sister, 36, complained that her family was in chaos. She doesn't understand why everyone can't get along and why they never have a truly good moment while everyone is together. I listened to her for around 20 minutes, and she told me I was being quiet. I responded that she clearly needed to vent, and I didn't want to interject. That was mostly true, but I also think my sister is a little insane for thinking she'd get to have a nice, neat little family, given the craziness in her family. For context, my sister had her first child at 18, my nephew Shane, 18 male. She dated Shane's dad for a while and found out when Shane was one that her boyfriend had another girl pregnant and so they broke up. My sister and the other mother both got arrested for fighting, and she swore she would never let that woman or her child near Shane. She got married at 21 and had two more kids, Katie, a teen female, and Rye, a young teen male. She filed for divorce straight after Rye was born, and her ex-husband has been nowhere in sight since. A year later, she met another man who had a baby with someone. My niece Lily, tween, is not my sister's biological child, but she raises her as her own, though unofficially since she's not adopted. Katie got married again, had Milo, pre-tween male, with that husband, and got pregnant with Sage, a pre-tween female, while married, but her ex-husband is not the father. Her youngest biological child so far is Niall, a male kindergartner, and his father is not in the picture either. My sister is married again. Her husband has two kids from his first marriage and two from his second marriage. He also has a child in his life who is not his biological kid. Doesn't get along with his biological kids, but he treats this child like his own. The household has many complicated relationships and divided loyalties. There are some complications with some of the other parents and children involved. It's too long and complicated to get involved in, but even among my sister's children, they are not all cohesive close siblings, and some resentments exist for one reason or another. Anyway, Lily was venting to me. She said nobody she knows has a family so incapable of getting together as hers. She asked me why I thought that was, and I said blended families are more complex. She told me there are people with bigger blended families than hers. I told her bigger doesn't always mean having as many others involved as hers. Then she said again they're all a family though, and they act like they don't want to be, and that's when I said probably because it's more of a circus than a family. My sister told me that was really unkind and untrue, that they are a family even if others can't see it. She told me she expects an apology before we can speak again. Am I the idiot? You mean to tell me that a revolving door of baby daddies doesn't make for a stable family dynamic? She needs a different hobby. She literally bred her own drama. Dear God, I had less trouble following the genealogy of Elden Ring characters than your sister's lineage. I'm giving you the not the idiot verdict because, although your comment could be understood as rude, her life is obviously about perpetuating the same mistakes and having the same outcome at the cost of kids' happiness in the end. I think I need a family tree since it sounds like she has three or four different fathers for her kids and then a few steps as well. Family tree? The woman's got more of a family bush. So many men have gone in now of her life while leaving some kids behind. I mean, I know, using that term loosely, someone like this, and all they do is have the oldest watch the other kids, pretend to be at work, when she's employed if ever, or sends the kids off with their dads, and whoever doesn't go to their dads gets sent to grandma's or auntie's house. She had like six kids last I knew. Meanwhile, I'm over here with two from the same dad that I divorced and didn't date for five years after our divorce was final, just to make sure I was healed, and my kids were well adjusted. Exactly. It's like she's auditioning for the next season of Family Feud Chaos Edition. However gentle, you are the idiot. Your sister's family is a circus, but you don't say that part out loud. Just because it's true doesn't mean it isn't hurtful. Tact is what determines whether you say the first thing you think or whether you take a minute to frame what you want to say in a way that won't hurt the other person's feelings. My sister, 36, and her husband have a tween kid who, for the purposes of this post, is called Jimothy, whom my husband and I sometimes babysit on the weekends and take to school on some days. About a year ago, we started to notice that Jimothy was beginning to develop an American accent. We're Australian. Small kids have phases, and so I didn't want to make it a thing. The accent got thicker over the next few months, and Jimothy became more irritable. My husband and I brought this up with my sister, who said Jimothy wasn't very grumpy when with her. He then started losing interest in almost all activities that he used to enjoy. Again, this was a concern for me. Every weekend it got worse. He would complain of being bored, 
but when we offered him an exhaustive list of all the things we could do with him, he said no to every single one. The school year for 2024 started, and on the weekend after that, Jimothy told us that his teacher and a few classmates had asked him how long he'd been in the US before moving to Australia. At this point, his American accent was indistinguishable from a general American's. My husband and I were really wondering what was happening. Then it was Jimothy's birthday party. His family was invited, including me, and so were all his friends. This was the moment that made me realize to some extent what was going on. He was on an iPad, scrolling through some kind of short-form content that I didn't recognize. His friends wanted to play with him, but he didn't notice they were there. People were giving him presents, and he acted like he was inconvenienced by having to turn the iPad off. Never before my nieces or nephews reacted like this upon me, giving them money and delicious treats. I told my sister that something was going on, and that Jimothy was obviously not in a good way. She seemed very offended that I was questioning her parenting choices, as she put it, and she decided that my husband and I babysitting Jimothy had to stop. The next time I saw Jimothy was very recently, at my niece's birthday party, different parents. Jimothy was utterly glued to the iPad. He was noticeably skinnier, which I suspect was because he was forgetting to eat in favor of iPad time. And when anyone went over to talk to him, he almost instinctively pushed the screen towards his body so nobody could see. I had to talk to my sister and her husband. I told them what I thought that a year ago, Jimothy was an energetic child who got along really well with everyone, and now he's reclusive, and it's obvious from just looking at him that he's skipping meals. My sister denied any changes in Jimothy's behavior, but her husband did admit that I was right to some extent, and Jimothy's friends had stopped trying to hang out with him because he said no 100% of the time. I told my sister she was wrecking Jimothy's life by continuing to let this iPad stuff happen. She started shouting at me, and I walked out of the party. Not the idiot. The kid obviously is deteriorating. I wouldn't be surprised for him to grow up with depression and anxiety when dealing with social interactions at school and at work. It's good that you and your husband care about Jimothy. At the end of the day, you tried to help by letting them handle the upcoming issues that will surely arise in the future. However, the accent is actually a weird thing to point out. It's not really an issue here. I don't think Opie's problem is that the accent is American. It's that he spends so much time watching things that his entire accent is from another country. It shows that what he's watching impacts his development more than his family, teachers and friends. Also, it clearly is part of a bigger problem, as now other people are starting to notice the issue. OP just picked up on the early warning signs. His immersing himself in his iPad isn't the cause, it's the consequence. It's the tip of the iceberg. My kids love their screens, but they also want to play board games, go cycling in the forest nearby or jump in the pool. There's something else. There's something that causes this kid to focus solely on his iPad. You were right to have concerns. If you're truly concerned and your sister keeps a blind eye to the situation, you may want to call the social service. It will hurt your relationship with your family, but it's better than letting this kid continue to suffer, because he is suffering. I'm surprised that more people aren't seeing this. Such a drastic change over a year is very, very concerning. My mom and Harry have been married for three years. They have two under two together, and then there's me, a nearly adult male who isn't Harry's kid. Harry comes from a huge family. His parents are still alive, and he has five siblings. They have something like 16 kids between them and their spouses, and all of them are coming to stay at our house for two weeks starting Saturday. I found this out Sunday night. Harry said some of his relatives are bringing tents, and others are bringing camp beds, and they can all fit but they'll be here for two whole weeks and a bunch of them will also be sleeping inside. Harry is so excited and my mom is all hyped up for it too. She isn't close to her family, so she's looking forward to having family around. I personally can't wait for them to be gone. I hardly know any of them, and even though they're technically family by marriage now, I don't know if I'll ever consider them my family. My mom pulled me aside yesterday and told me I wasn't acting excited and she couldn't understand why because she thought I'd want to get to know my extended family. I told her that many people who I don't know or care about are coming to stay and it's not going to be comfortable. I said a day would be a lot, but two whole weeks sounds like a nightmare to be stuck with Harry's huge damn family. My mom started whisper scolding me, saying they're our family too and that she expected me to be more eager to have them here. I told her I'd prefer to stay with a friend for two weeks, I said they'd even have an extra room to use for everyone. My mom said that was such a negative attitude to have. She told me I'd finally have grandparents, aunts and uncles, and some cousins. Don't I want that? 
I told her I'd rather be comfortable at my friend's home. Then last night, Mom told me the way I talked about our family wasn't okay and that if I really wanted to go to my friend's house and if his parents were cool with it, I could, but she would be disappointed and still expect me to change my attitude. I was like, thank you, but Mom told me the way I describe being around Harry's family as a nightmare is not okay. Am I the idiot? Does your mother really expect his family to treat you like part of the family, given your recent addition at 17? To be the grandson and nephew now? These are not your family. It will never be your family. You are their son's wife's son. They are your mother's husband's family. She is totally delusional. Not the idiot. It sounds like your mom just wants to play happy families. Personally, it sounds like my idea of a nightmare. Not the idiot. It's totally inappropriate for anyone to tell you what you should think or feel. It would be one thing if your mom said, I understand that's how you feel, and I can see how this situation could be frustrating for you. But I'm asking you to give it a try for the sake of our family. That would be reasonable and respectful of her. That's not what she did. Her attitude suggests that your needs will be ignored during the two weeks that this massive family will be in your home. Sounds like a nightmare to me. An extra 28 people? I hope you have portable toilets and showers set up. Family is like fish. It starts to stink after three days. Also, I wonder how many neighbours will complain to the police about them being there for so long. LOL. There are only five people in my family and it already feels suffocating sometimes. Your mom is not understanding here. Integrating into a new family is something that happens slowly and organically. It cannot be forced, especially not on a teenager, in such an extreme way. So my 29 female sister, 27, and I have always been pretty close, or so I thought. Last year, I married the love of my life and we had a small intimate wedding. My sister was supposed to be my maid of honor, but she never showed up. No call, no text, nothing. I was devastated, but I tried to focus on the day and not let it ruin things. Later, she explained that she had a panic attack and couldn't handle the pressure. I understood and tried to be supportive, but it still hurt that she didn't even try to let me know. Fast forward to now, my sister is pregnant and recently asked me for help, both financially and with planning her baby shower. She is in a tough spot and I do feel bad for her, but I'm still hurt about the wedding. I told her that I'm not in a position to help her right now and she got really upset, saying that I'm being selfish and holding a grudge. Now my family is divided. Some say I should let it go and support her, while others think it's fair for me to be upset. So am I the idiot for refusing to help her? I'm sorry, panic attack or not, who doesn't turn up or even let the bride know they're not going to turn up at a sibling's wedding? Not the idiot. I wouldn't be helping her with anything. Tell her, I'd love to help you with your baby, but I can't handle the pressure. I'm sure you'd understand. She didn't even give you the courtesy of a phone call, and now you're just supposed to forgive all? Has she even said the words, I am sorry? Her crappy behavior surrounding your wedding is one thing. You're still allowed to say no to her, even if she was the best maid of honor in the world. Do people not realize this? Insanity. Instead of showing remorse, she goes on to attack with accusations. I don't think she's sorry for missing your wedding. I think she was jealous and wanted to ruin your day, so she didn't show up. I wouldn't give her anything, least of all your time and money. Why is she even having a kid if she doesn't have any money? She's immediately asking for money and is angry that you're not giving it to her. Screw her. Her selfishness is going to be a burden on you and your entire family for at least 18 years, and the people who can't pick a side are ridiculous. What will she do when she has a panic attack when the kid needs his diaper changed? Update. Am I the idiot for refusing to help my sister after she didn't show up for my wedding? Thank you for all your thoughtful advice and support. After much reflection, I addressed the issue directly with my sister. I arranged a meeting with her, aiming for an honest and open discussion about her absence from my wedding. It was important to articulate how deeply her actions affected me, particularly since she was supposed to be my maid of honor. During our conversation, I started by expressing how hurt and disappointed I was by her not showing up and not even attempting to contact me on the day of the wedding. I told her that her absence, especially given her role, was devastating and significantly impacted my special day. I stressed that her lack of communication made the situation even more painful. My sister's reaction was quite defensive. Instead of acknowledging the hurt she caused, she focused heavily on her panic attack. 
She claimed that her mental health crisis was so overwhelming that she couldn't manage to reach out and she expected this to be sufficient justification for her absence. She repeatedly said that I should understand how debilitating her condition was and suggested that I was being unreasonable for holding on to my feelings. I tried to explain that while I understood she was dealing with a serious issue, the lack of communication and the absence on a major day in my life left me feeling abandoned and unsupported. I emphasized that acknowledging the impact of her actions was crucial for moving forward and rebuilding our relationship. The conversation took a turn when my sister shifted focus to her current struggles. She's pregnant and dealing with financial difficulties, which she attributes to her baby daddy's lack of involvement. She asked for my help with her baby shower and financial support, framing it as a dire need given her challenging circumstances. It became apparent that she relied heavily on others to make up for her baby daddy's shortcomings. When I mentioned that I wasn't able to help financially or with the baby shower, she became upset. She accused me of being unsupportive and selfish. She seemed to believe that her current struggles should overshadow the past issues and that I should put my feelings aside to support her. My parents, informed about the situation, have urged me to be more forgiving and supportive. They believe that family should come together, especially in difficult times. Their perspective has been challenging, as it feels like they're minimizing my own hurt and focusing primarily on my sister's current needs. My husband has been a critical source of support. He agrees with my decision to maintain boundaries and not provide support under the current circumstances. He feels that while empathy is important, my sister's failure to take responsibility and her tendency to blame others makes it difficult to justify helping her. In the end, I've decided to stand by my decision not to help with the baby shower or money. Thank you again for your support and advice.